Andy, you've got a pretty extensive background of working in football. Just for example, Milton Keynes, you were scouting for them in the Northwest, also involved with the England setup as well. How did all that come about in your life? In my early years, uh, I was coaching, um, moved out of coaching uh, as I got older and responsibilities and work took over and made coaching uh, as a dual career really, really difficult. And that um, love of football and that want to, to still provide uh, opportunities for people just led me into uh, scouting, really. I, I knew Carl Robinson well from my days at Liverpool. And when he took over as the manager, I did the North West Scouting match reports for him. Um, which went well. I mean, in the second season that I did that, they got promoted, which was really uh, good. And since then, I've moved into the England setup. So I, I scout for the 18s and up right through to the seniors. And while you were doing all this and other things as well, you were also a head teacher. How did you manage to balance everything into the perspective of the life that you were living? I really don't know. I can't answer that question. I just guess it's the passion and the draw of the game that you love. You know, I, I grew up supporting a certain team and I played very young and I followed that passion and that ambition through teaching into football. Um, just one thing led to another and I guess over time it just becomes habitual. You, you know, you lock into two careers and obviously uh, starting a family as well. Yeah, it really, really challenging. You've got to have an understanding partner, that's for sure. And also involved with Liverpool ladies as well. Yeah, that came after my time at Liverpool Academy. So I was at Liverpool's Academy for 13 years before then moving across with a good friend of mine into the ladies. And we did four years uh, with Liverpool ladies in the Northern Prem and in the WSL. Um, I, I moved out of that, unfortunately, uh, and then went to Everton uh, before then taking a little bit more downtime. Uh, before I then, then I came here in, I think it was 2017, as the manager first time around with the ladies. And being involved in the ladies game, was that something that you then felt was a focus of yours or did it just happen, so to speak? Yeah, I think it just happened, you know, uh, I, I never sort of planned it that way when, when I moved from Liverpool's academy to Liverpool ladies, but it was such an enjoyable opportunity and a, and a set up there that, you know, um, I guess it, it furnished my ambitions further forward when other opportunities came along. So, for example, I worked with the England schools on the 15s uh, side as well for four seasons uh, before I came here to TNS. So, uh, you know, I've got a bit of a background in youth development of girls as well as uh, senior first team. And when you came to the New Saints the first time, how did that particular door open for you? Um, I, I just responded to the advert basically at that time. I think it was Pete Wilson that uh, moved on at that time and I was one of the uh, fortunate people that was interviewed and fortunately Ian Brazier, who was the chairman of the women's section at that time, when he interviewed me, offered me the job and I think, you know, those that know TNS, the rest is history for that season. And you had a good time. What was the highlight? Would it be the Newcastle United away victory in the FA Cup? If you're referring to the sing-song on the bus on the way home, probably not. Uh, that, that's not a forte of mine, but that, that FA Cup run was certainly a highlight, of course. We were unfortunate to get knocked out here in the following round, which was the, the, the fourth round on penalties, believe it or not, which was a bit of a heartbreak because we would have drawn Liverpool in the fifth round then at home. So, yeah, that was a real highlight. But just working with the players, galvanising a team, uh, creating an environment and a culture, you know, they're all special memories that I carry with me. And you're back for a second spell. What was it that brought you back to parkour? Well, I've been speaking to Ian Williams for several months now um, about where the club was going, the club's vision, the club's ambition to grow and develop. And obviously, uh, the club wants to align under a one club vision headline or banner, uh, which incorporates a, a girls and female pathway. Um, and... Ian has approached me and asked me would I come back as the first team manager and head of women and girls football to lead that programme and to, to reshape it and model it, to transform it and, and be evolutionary in, as I say, developing something special for girls and women in this area, in this region. 
And the big change, of course, is that TNS ladies are no longer in the English system, but have moved into the Welsh setup. How different will that be for you in terms of structure, attracting players from a, a geographical area and so on and so forth? Well, in terms of the, the differences, of course, you, you're competing in a national league straight away uh, rather than in a regional league. So the national setup is going to require more travelling uh, for a start. So there's planning implications around that. And that may uh, attract players, that may not attract players. Uh, that we obviously can't determine that at the moment. In terms of obviously opportunities, it's a great opportunity for the team, it's a great opportunity for the club to go and showcase what we're all about on that national scene.